All right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well wherever you are today. We have got uh, quite a lot of blocking to the north and to the east of the British Isles. All the Atlantic traffic appears to be getting backed up to the west and to the south of the UK and Ireland. But in today's video, I wanted to start off by providing a little bit of context. It looks as if a couple of people on uh, various social media uh, channels have been um, kind of taking a few things that I've said out of context in recent days with regards to the overall pattern. Uh, and I want to emphasize the point that we have got a, an ongoing sudden stratospheric warming taking place at the moment. And it does look as if we are seeing a response down the road in terms of high latitude blocking, whether it be over Scandinavia, the North Atlantic, Greenland, or whatever. Um, I want to emphasize the point that uh, remember what has been said all along here on the channel. I haven't been emphasizing anything in particularly cold. And a strong blocking pattern is not me saying a cold pattern is going to develop. In fact, I've made it very, very clear in recent times that without any cold air available to tap, whether it be with a Scandinavian high and the air mass coming in underneath, or uh, from a north or northeasterly direction, without that cold source region to tap into, we will simply not see anything particularly cold. And at this moment in time, we're simply seeing a east to southeasterly airflow that's dragging in a lot of low cloud, as seen in today's visible satellite imagery. This is a great image that has been shared by Willie Mossop, uh, based in Strathpeffer in the northwest of Scotland, emphasising the influence of an east to southeast the airflow at this time of the year. Low cloud, feeling rather chilly in that breeze and exposure of that breeze and underneath the cloud cover. Further west and northwest, you tend to find more in the way of sunshine shelter, whether it be from the Pennines, from the Cumbrian Fells, the Southern Uplands, or as is often the case, the Grampian Mountains. Once you get to the lee of these hills, you tend to find there is sunshine on offer thanks to an overall high pressure dominated weather pattern. So I want to emphasize the point. I've seen comments on Facebook and Twitter and on YouTube saying that, you know, it's too little too late with regards to cold. I'm not saying that it's going to turn particularly cold. There is a nagging chill in the air when you've got the breeze, when you've got the cloud cover in place. But in the sunshine, this time of the year, the sun is as strong as I believe it is in late September. And you can see a response. You can feel the warmth in the air at this time of the year. Even with cold air masses in place, even when you've got a cold air mass in place at this time of the year, in exposure of the sun, you do actually feel warmth in that sun at this time of the year. So this is the current visible satellite imagery as of just after 4 p.m. UK time. And you can see what's going on. So we've got the east to southeasterly air flow. This is the upper air pattern, by the way, of the GFS for 3 p.m. this afternoon. And uh, this overview, which represents precipitation, cloud temperature and pressure, is quite nicely depicted in the current visible satellite image. So uh, you've got the bank of cloud, uh, eastern areas of the British Isles with the uh, pockets of sunshine, more so where you have got um, protection from hills to the east. Then you've got this big bank of cloud extending from Iceland all the way down to Iberia. As you can see, if you look at the, uh, the pressure chart, we've got an area of low pressure at 993 millibars just to the northwest of Iberia, and uh, we've got a frontal system that's going to be pressed uh, eastwards across at the Iberian Peninsula over the next day or so. So there's that area of high pressure that's keeping the weather over and to the west of the UK and Ireland here. So you can see that we've got an east to southeasterly airflow. If you throw in the 850 temperatures, you can see that we're not particularly cold. There is chillier aloft, but what that chillier aloft actually does is it enhances the upward motion or the lift within the atmosphere. So you've got the incoming solar radiation. If you've got cold air aloft, you tend to find that there is a bit of uh, advection. There's a bit of convection and lift within the atmosphere that sh uh, develops showers 
and even thunderstorms. And that mechanism uh, becomes more enhanced as we move out of March into the month of April, hence the April showers saying when you've got incoming solar radiation, you've got strong incoming solar radiation during the month of April with cold air aloft, you've got a lot of shower activity that develops. And, and really this cold air mass is in the mid to upper levels. It's not down at low levels, unfortunately, for anybody that wants a particularly cold weather. So you can see here, this is the temperatures uh, at the time of recording. So we've got with the sunshine, 10, 11 Celsius, nothing particularly warm, but nothing cold either. Um, for the time of the year. Then you've got underneath that the bank of cloud that I just showed you. We've got temperatures uh, anywhere from what four Celsius to about seven or eight Celsius. Factor in the breeze coming in off the east to northeasterly direction, and you've got a distinct nip in the air, but nothing beastly or beast from the east or nothing like that. That has never been mentioned here on the channel. I want to emphasize that point because it can be a bit frustrating. When you've got people that kind of jump on things that I uh, suppose that want to see uh, and, and twist things that you say. And uh, I think I've made it pretty clear actually in recent times uh, exactly what my thinking is. Average to warmer than average March has been forecast. Uh, I do think that we have the possibility of some spells of chillier than average conditions. We've also got a chance, I think, with the warmer than average sea surface temperatures both surrounding the UK and to the south. If you get the right atmospheric conditions, you've got heat now starting to build in the subtropics. Doesn't take an awful lot late March into April for some sort of surge of warmth to come our way. That is also on the table here. And I think I made mention of that back in the, the March outlook, that that is a possibility of seeing something warmer towards the end of the month here. Remember, SSW taking place, enhanced blocking. There is very cold air over Central Asia. That may try to drift it westwards towards the UK eventually. So it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but there is room here for spells of chillier than average conditions. Doesn't mean it's particularly cold by any stretch. We can get big snowfall, we can get cold weather even in the month of April. History tells us that. But there is room for anything to take place but i'm not buying the idea of anything particularly cold at all these are current wind speeds in kilometers per hour across the british isles and you can see some fairly brisk breezes especially across eastern areas of the uk even that southwest corner you've got some pretty windy conditions across northern ireland as well same idea as the uk in exposure of the uh, the, the north channel or the irish sea You've got a distinct nip in the air. Another emphasis to point out is when I mentioned spring, I mentioned meteorological spring. I'm not talking about spring-like warmth. Just feel today a little bit that I need to kind of add a little context into what I'm saying because I think there is definitely people out there that are picking up things that they want. They hear what they want to say and then kind of interpret into whatever mindset you may or may not have. But uh, you can see here, this is the back to the current temperatures. I want to emphasize this one as well. So you've got um, a neither particularly cold or particularly warm air mass in place at the moment. But if you've got the easterly wind, what you've got is the air temperature is very much driven by the cold waters of the North Sea. And if you look at the temperatures, so you've got the fives, sixes and sevens up the length and breadth of the east coast of the UK. If you factor in the current sea surface temperatures, you can see that the air temperature is very much reflective of the sea surface temperatures in the North Sea. So sixes and sevens up and down the length of the UK. When you've got the wind coming in off that water, the temperature tends to reflect that temperature profile overall. So let's have a look and see exactly what is expected in terms of the CFSV2. This is a slightly out of date version because the new one's updating. But I want to emphasize the point about the high latitude blocking. I think anything particular cold within the middle latitude pattern is more favorable for North America. And we've got a very weak form of cold expected late March 
in the early April uh, across the British Isles here. Um, like I say, there's a, a mixed feelings towards how cold or warm it's going to be. I don't expect anything particularly cold, but you can see here, this is the upcoming seven day period. Big strong high extend from uh, Scandinavia across the north in the Greenland, in the north portions of North America here. Into week two, you can see here that the block starts to shift. We still have positive heights extend from the UK uh, up towards uh, Scandinavia across the Greenland. But you notice here that the focus of strongest blocking is actually now across the North America. We've got a bit of a, a negative now starting to show up over eastern North America. You can see, expect to see something a little bit colder, perhaps developing over the central and eastern United States. Notice here the blocking area of high pressure is actually quite far south. So therefore, we may tap into something a little bit warmer. Southeasterly wind with a, a relatively mild air mass uh, on the continent means that we could see some mild conditions developing here. But that area of high pressure looks as if it's going to become a little bit further south. We're going to focus the negative to the west of the British Isles. Therefore, the air flow is likely to be east, southeast, or southerly in itself. Into week three, you can see here that we have the, the focus of high pressure now centered more towards Greenland and the North Atlantic, shutting down the Atlantic, so to speak. There's that block uh, stopping Atlantic weather systems from moving in. We've got more of a trough now starting to show up over the UK and Ireland. This is the time frame between the 20th and the 27th of March, which is quite interesting, actually. And this could be a, an atmospheric response to what took place and what is taking place within the stratosphere of 10 millibars, where you've got the winds now reversed. They're uh, cycling, uh, surrounding the polar vortex in an east to west direction as opposed to a west to east direction. But a lot of that strong warming has taken place from Asia across the North America. And then it's obviously deflected the jet stream uh, further south. It is in a weakening state. It tends to start weakening during the month of March anyway, the jet stream becomes a little bit less influential uh, as we move towards the, the middle and second half of the spring season. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly chart here. This is uh, something that might be quite interesting to look at here. This is week one of the CFSV2. Probably a little bit hard to see, and I apologize for that. But you can see a lot of warmer than average. Another one, another comment that I noticed here, uh, emphasizing that you know temperatures are warm than average across Greenland but it's still a bit like cold well that's quite obvious to, to, to say when I talk about temperatures far warmer than average I'm not necessarily saying that the temperature is actually warm I'm just saying it's compared to average so uh, the likes of Greenland seeing temperatures 16 to 18 celsius above average it doesn't correlate to 16 to 18 celsius at the surface it just means it's warmer than what it would be considered average for the time of the year so you can see the warm -er than average conditions across the north of north america we've had such a warm winter and we've still got that warmer than average pattern across the majority of north america actually with the exceptions of western canada and western united states looking at week two and you can see here that the uk is warmer than average. North America continues to remain warmer than average, according to the CFSV2, at least anyway. And then as we move towards the period of 20th through the 27th of March, you can see here that the UK is still warmer than average, despite the fact that, remember, the 500 millibar, you've got the block over the North Atlantic and Greenland. You've got the trough over eastern North America, over western portions of the continent as well. And the reason why... This is possibly correct, is the fact that we don't have a particularly cold air mass over Europe here. So even though we've got the setup from a 500 millibar perspective, it doesn't necessarily correlate to a cold pattern based on the fact that we don't have the cold air available to tap into. And that is the crux of what I'm talking about. Yes, we've got a strong blocking pattern developing but doesn't necessarily mean we've got a March 2013, March 2018, or anything close to that. So in today's video, I know it sounds like I'm kind of trying to defend myself or um, I've got a kind of tone or whatever. 
it's just trying to emphasize what has been said before because there is like i say people out there that take things that twist things you know to fit whatever agenda or whatever they want to have i'm emphasizing the point i'm talking about the current upper air pattern but not necessarily anything particular code so that's it for today i will hopefully be back again tomorrow with more and uh, i'll likely take saturday off because um the pattern at the moment let's be honest is is, is reasonably quiet at the moment we will probably look more at the the ssw what's going on within the stratosphere at the moment and they uh, will look perhaps uh, at the next few days coming up what's the weather going to be like over the course of the weekend etc etc so stay tuned like share and subscribe see you again tomorrow with more bye